Hey guys, I'm Robert from The Mail Room, and today I want to walk you through how to cut a mullet. And we're going to be doing a mullet that goes pretty short on the sides. We're not going to go like down to bald skin, but it is going to be pretty short. And we're going to leave all this nice luscious beauty in the back and take it fairly short on top. So I just want to show you guys my approach and let's get started. Okay, so now we've got the back separated from the, from the sides and top. So now we need to separate the sides from the top. So I'm gonna use my comb again to find out where the head rounds. And wherever my comb is at a 45 degree, that's, that's the round that I wanna use. So I'm gonna place my comb in there, make a nice clean line to the recession, and comb this down. Okay, just a little bit lower than that. All right, so now that we have our section made, I'm just gonna clip off the top, just so that it's nice and clean and out of our way. Great. So we're gonna start on this uh, right side and how we're going to do this is we're going to work a triangular shape from the front to the back where we're getting where we're short right here and then gradually getting longer to the back so that it blends into the mullet and I'm going to use vertical sections because this hair is really coming straight down here so I'm going tight to the head right here section one and now section two we're gonna pull section two to one since we're going fairly short on the sides this is going to stay pretty short all the way back to about here and then we're gonna really start over directing forward to build in that triangular shape that'll let us blend from the sides into the back that's the main problem I'm seeing with a lot of a lot of mullets that I, I see on YouTube. A lot of them just there's just no blend from the side to the back. And so it just looks really choppy here and it looks like you just kind of shaved up the side of the head. So we want to really make sure that this blends nicely so that it really flows back and has a lot of good motion and blend. So section three getting pulled to two. If we start building out this triangular shape too early, what will happen is we'll have a lot of weight right here and the head will just look really round and poofy. But on a mullet, you want the sides to be nice and flat, leading really streamlined into the back. So now that we are just past the ear, I'm gonna start over directing every section to the section that's at the middle of the ear. All right, so we're gonna section off the crown as well. So I'm just gonna make a round section right through here. I'll turn it so you guys can see it. Forgot to do this step when we were sectioning off the radial part. So I'm just gonna make a triangular section on the crown just so we can really control it and we can work back in, into here. All right, so now let's work into the sides. So we're gonna keep working this back. 
directing each section over the ear. And I'm going to cut down to here, and then once we get close to the top of the ear, since I want to preserve all of the length in the back right here, we're going to start to pull out and slice. All right, advancing the section back. Over directing this section all the way over the ear. And now I'm just going to slice the rest of this off. I'm going to check the motion to make sure it's doing what I want it to. It's moving nicely, so we'll continue. all the way until my last section gets to the middle back. So just so you guys can see, pulling this section, and I'm working it all the way around. It's a really long over direction. We're just making sure this back gets connected in. I think this is going to be my last section because I'm barely getting anything here. But now we can see that that just has so much nice flow. The sides are really stacking up well. Soft, layered, flowing back. That's exactly what we want to see. And from a profile view, it's not too bulky and weighty right through here. Okay, let's do the next side. The main reason we want to have the back separated from the sides on this is because we want to have a clear reference for each side to see exactly where we stopped on the other side so that we have a, have a symmetrical reference so that we don't start building weight here where on the other side we started building weight back here. This is the last section that's going to be over directed to the previous and now every section is going to be over directed right above the ear to this one. If 
All right, guys, so this is a really tricky part of the haircut because right here we need to over direct above the ear, but we also need to slice out. And so it's, it's impossible to hold the hair like this. I mean, you could do it, but it's just really uncomfortable to try and go this way uh, to, to like slice that out. So what I like to do is I'll make my section and then instead of trying to pick up the hair like this, I'll flip the comb over. And now I'm pushing it to the front so I can grab the hair underhanded instead of if I were like this, having to grab the hair overhanded. So once again, that's flip the comb around, push to the front, grab the hair underhanded. I'll find my guide. There it is. And so now I'm at the part where I need to start slicing. And so since I'm palm to palm, I can just slice right out. And so I'm gonna use that same grip all the way down the side here. It's a bit awkward at first, but you actually get used to it pretty quickly. So as I get closer to the middle back, I'm starting to see that there's less and less to cut. So I know I'm getting close to the end. I'm really, really loving this motion that we've got going on. All right, so now we've got both sides cut and I'm just gonna assess the back and see if we even need to take any length off. I really don't think we do. So I'm just gonna let this crown down. And we're just gonna make sure it all really connects. But I also just want to kind of square the back up a bit because it's grown out from who knows what. So we're just gonna take some of this roundness that's inevitably in there and just square it up. So to do that, I'm just gonna make vertical sections starting with the center one. And I'm not just going to cut, my cutting line is not going to be vertical. I'm not just going to go straight up and down here. I'm going to actually angle out. So this will be extremely layered, but it'll also maintain all of the length at the bottom. So our vertical shape is going to be triangular and our horizontal shape is going to be square. Once I get to the occipital, I'm slicing out just to make sure we leave all of the weight that we can at the bottom here. Okay, I'm going to split this section, get the right part out of the way, pull down a new piece. And so I'm going to direct two to one, and that gives us square. Angled out. 
Next part is past the occipital. So we're just going to slice that out. What I'm doing when I'm slicing is just closing the blade halfway on the hair just so that we lightly cut it. I'm not just chomp, chomp, chomp. As we're getting closer to the side, I'm going to start running out of anything to cut because this has already been pulled over here and cut so short. Yeah, and I don't have anything to cut. Okay, so we're going to move on to the right side. I'm going to find my guide again by just making that part down the center because we have already cut the section right here in the center, so I know this has already been cut and I'll have a guide there. I know for a lot of the hardcore mullet enthusiasts, cutting anything off the back at all is just a major sin. So I know some people are gonna hate that I'm cutting the back, but I need it to be in a nice shape and I want it to be layered and look nice. So I get that a lot of people wanna just totally leave the back and leave it really ratty and stuff, but I just prefer to put a little bit of shape in there. All right, so we're gonna move on to the top. And the top we wanna to be fairly short, but I'm a big fan of like the Billy from Stranger Things kind of mullet where there's like a lot of uh, weight and texture on top. So we're not gonna do like the Joe Dirt where it's just like a, a flat top shaved sides with a big mullet. I love those too, there's a place for it, but uh, right now I just wanna do a mullet that we've got a lot of volume to play with on top.
All right, so I wanna leave it fairly rough around the ears and around the edges. I don't want this to look really like cut out and edged up. So what I'm gonna do is just take the scissor in right here, and just lightly point cut this. This will just look like he's lived in it for a couple of weeks. If they ever have like neck hair that just kind of connects to the back, I'll go in and disconnect that. But he really doesn't have any neck hair that's showing below where the mullet stops. So I'm not even gonna worry about edging up the back at all. There we go. All right, let's blow dry it and throw a little bit of texture in there and we'll be done. Now that we've got it close to dry, I'm going to run back through and just add a bit of texture in the top and a little bit in the back. I'm gonna use fairly deep point cuts here just because I don't wanna to add too much choppy, like I don't wanna do really choppy angles like that. And I'm gonna go vertically with the top since it's all gonna be laying back. I wouldn't wanna do horizontal vertical sections and then have it all, all seen as these like choppy layers on top. All right, same thing in the back. We're gonna do some vertical layers and just add some chop into here just to help it have a little bit more motion, even though it's got a ton of good natural texture and motion already. We're just going to assist a little bit. Sweet, we're gonna finish blow drying. Throw a little bit of matte clay in there and we are set. All right, so I'm using our matte clay pomade just because it has a natural dry finish and a pretty grippy medium hold that's just gonna add a lot of grit to this haircut and just keep it looking sharp for him all day. We're just gonna get it really nice and worked through. I'm really gonna crunch this up to show the texture. One of the reasons I wanna leave the top disconnected is because I love when it hangs over the side like this. There we go.